హలో టు ఎవ్రీ వన్ సో దిస్ ఈస్ న్యూమెరికల్ నీన్ రాజ్యభర అప్లికేషన్స్ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు హ్యావ్ ఏ నైన్త్ లెక్చర్ అండ్ లెట్ ఎస్ రికాల్ క్విక్లీ బిఫోర్ గోయింగ్ టు ది దిస్ లెక్చర్ వీ స్టార్టెడ్ విత్ ది సిస్టమ్ ఆఫ్ ఈక్వేషన్స్ ఏక్స్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ బి అండ్ దెన్ వీ హ్యావ్ కమ్ టు ది ఐగన్ వాల్యూస్ అండ్ ఐగన్ ఫంక్షన్స్ యాజ్ వీ హ్యావ్ సీన్ ఫ్యూ ఎగ్జాంపుల్స్ how eigen values will reflect the eigen functions and thereby the solution of the systems in continuation to that we would be doing some more concepts in this lecture today least square solution of ax is equal to b let us see the third idea is least square solution of ax is equal to b how the solution will be reflects when you have a coefficient matrix a and unknown vector b unknown vector x and right side vector b let a be a non n by n matrix with the columns linearly independent look at here the columns linearly independent our problem is to determine x such that r is equal to b minus a x so therefore r is the residue r is the residue and b is the right side vector a is a coefficient matrix and x is the unknowns so there would be a some residue r which would be free from zero right because if it is exactly zero then we would have got a best solution that is true solution we would have got true solution so we try to write x such that r is equal to b minus ax has minimum euclidean norm denoted by this norm so this is a euclidean norm that is the two norm which also we call it as euclidean norm right well now let qr decomposition of a as we already seen the coefficient matrix a is equal to can be written as in terms of two matrices that is q and r right r is the upper triangular matrix q is the orthogonal matrix which we have seen l let qr can be written in terms of a that is q of a is equal to that is equal to r and it is zero right where r is non singular r is non singular r is a non singular and uh, upper triangular matrix and upper triangular and zero is any way you know it is a zero matrix it's a zero matrix well having had this concept let us see how you can minimize this residue r is equal to b minus ax well let's see that and we set qb is equal to a transpose c transpose o transpose and a will belongs to r of m now this implies what you get is q of r is equal to q times of b minus ax and that will be equal into a minus rx and this is the c so that means essentially we would be trying to write this qr as a minus rx comma c observe that q is orthogonal we were thinking that q is supposed to be supposed to be orthogonal supposed to be orthogonal well q is orthogonal matrix the euclidean norm r is norm of r norm of r square is equal to norm of a minus rx square plus norm of c square so which is minimum if rx is equal to a so that means if rx is equal to a that is r of x is equal to a if r of x is equal to a and can be solved for x by back substitution so therefore by using what you call back substitution back substitution so we should able to get the matrix x as it is a so triangular system of equations so you would be able to get what you call triangular system of equations therefore 
the minimum residual in the sense of Euclid norm is can be written as R is equal to Q transpose times of 0 transpose C transpose O transpose. That is how you do get what you call the residual R in the sense of Euclidean norm. So, the Euclidean norm plays a vital role in trying to find out the residue of this matrix. Well, let us see one simple example. Suppose I wanted to obtain least square solution of Ax is equal to b. So, I want to obtain least square solution of Ax is equal to b. Where the matrix A is equal to that is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, it is 4 rows and 2 columns. So, you will have so 4 over 2 and it is and it is uh, 2 over 1 and it is 4 over that is 4 rows 1 over 1. So, if you compute these two things you do get as 4 by 1 and uh, this is uh, 4 by 1 matrix. So, therefore, right side also you have a 4 by 1 matrix. So, it is compatible. So, therefore, you can see very closely what is the rank of this matrix A. Rank of this matrix A is let us say there is a one sub matrix of 1 by 1. So, therefore, it is not equal to 1 and the maximum exists is 2 by 2 square matrix you can write it as. So, if you take 0, 1, minus 3, 0. Determinant of this will be 0 plus 3. So, which is equal to 3, not equal to 0. So, therefore, the fourth is, third is not possible. So, therefore, rank is obtained to be 2. And rank of the augmented matrix, if you include the augmented matrix, it becomes 0, 1, 1, minus 3, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, that is 4, 10 over 3, 1. So, 3 by 3 is not equal to 0. So, rank of the A of B is equal to obviously it is 3. Rank of the augmented matrix is 3. That is fine. So, we do able to get the rank of augmented matrix as 3 and rank of this coefficient matrix is 2. So, obviously the system is inconsistent as we see from the system of equations. Ax is equal to B. So, if rank of, if rank of A is equal to rank of A B augmented matrix, then we will have a consistent system. Then the system is said to be a consistent system. So, therefore, in this case, we do get what we call an inconsistent system. Well, look at this. So, we shall determine x such that the Euclidean norm of R is equal to B minus X is minimal. So, we wanted to make the norm as minimal. Right. So, R is the residual and B is the right side vector, A is the coefficient matrix and X is the unknown vector. So, given B and given coefficient matrix, you could always compute the what you call residue in order to make the minimal. So, to do this fact, we should use what we call householder transformation, householder transformation. So, U1 is determined so that U1 is equal to that is 0, minus 3, 0, 4 transpose alpha and EV1. So, here alpha is a scalar quantity. So, we need to find out the form of this scalar, how we able to, how we could able to use what you call the householder transformation. Well, in continuation to that, let us see, let us see this is the matrix I do have. What is the matrix I have? U1 is equal to, so first row will be 0, 0.6, 0, minus 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.64, 0 0.48 and here it is 0, 0, 1, 0 and it is minus 0 0.8, 0 0.48, 0, 0, 0.36. This is the matrix U and what is this matrix V? 5 by 5, minus 8 by 3, 0 0.2, 0, 2.2, 0 10.72, or if multiply with 10, so it is 10.72, 0, 2.0, 0, 1, 0 0.4, 0 0.04. The vector, let us write U transpose. So, U transpose turns out to be 2.2, 2.0, 0.4. This is what you do get from the U transpose. 
and u2 u2 get as that is 1 0 0 i3 minus 2 q square all in hours u into u transpose so this is anyway so you do get as 2 by 2 matrix so the entries are the matrices of entries will become 1 0 0 0 and 0 minus 0 0.733 0 0.663 0.133 and 0 0.667, 0 0.744, minus 0 0.051 and 0 0.133, point minus 0 0.051, 0 0.990. So you do get like this. Well, then I can write this matrix A as that is U2 times of U1. The matrix A and right side vector B. So I have 5, this element is 5, 0, 0, 0, and it is 8 by 3, 3, 0, 0, 0 0.2, 1 0 0.933, 4 0 0.05, 0 0.214. So this computation is done. This computation is done. So, with this you do get what we call the matrix R, R is equal to 5, 8 by 3, 0, 3, okay, and this is the main diagonal, this is the zeros, and A is equal to minus of 0 0.2, 1.993 whole transpose, would be minus of 0 0.405, 0 0.241 transpose. So, you do get the vector C. Well, so, when you solve this equation, that is R of X is equal to A and you do get as X1 is equal to minus of 0 0.3034, X2 is equal to 0 0.644, right? So, you do get a vector X1 is equal to 0 0.3034 and X2 you get as 0 0.644. So, therefore, you could able to get this as R is equal to U1 times of U2 transpose u1 times of u2 times of c1 c0 0 0 etc c1 transpose express like this you do get 0 0.356 0 0.089 0 minus 0 0.2489 0 0.066 whole transpose right so therefore the idea is how you calculate this value of r residual is more important because that will decide the residue of the matrix now let us see from this example how we can interpret the geometrically, geometrically how we can interpret. A solution of the least square problem to the linear system x equal to b always exists. So I make a conclusion that the solution of the linear system always exists. This is because one can project b onto the plane r of a, that means we can project this onto the plane r of a. The vector u belongs to R of A, the vector u belongs to R of A. And there is x belongs to R of n such that u is equal to ax. This is more important. Therefore, x is a solution here. So, it is very easy to see that the projection of this vector R A to obtain a vector R A, there is, a, there is an x belongs to x power n such that if this condition holds u is equal to ax, then this is an exact solution. So, when you get exact solution, there is no need to go for the, the best approximate solution. Well, in continuation to that, because B minus AX is perpendicular to RA and there is X belongs to R power N such that UX is equal to is orthogonal. Right? This becomes an orthogonal vector. Now, let us see. Let A belongs to R of M and the system of any equations that is A transpose ax is equal to a transpose of p is called the normal equations. So, very very important case. How do you obtain the normal equations for a set of matrices? You do have it. When you have the matrix A belongs to R of Mn, the system of equations that is a transpose ax is equal to a transpose into d is called the normal equations. So, once you bring down into normal equations, many of the theory will become very easy for us to find out the nature of those systems.
Now, in continuation to that, we would also look at into what we call existence and uniqueness of the uniqueness of the least square solution. From the geometric configuration, a least square solution always exists and satisfies the normal equation. So that means this is clear. So from the geometric configuration, a least square solution always exists and satisfies the normal equation, right? And uh, let us uh, with this concept, let us prove a theorem. Given A is M by N matrix and B is R by M, a vector X belongs R for M is called least square solution of X equal to B if and only if the system A inverse X is equal to A inverse of B. That is the least square solution when X is unique if and only if has full rank. That means the least square solution exists and is unique if and only if A has a full rank. So if the matrix A is a full rank, So, if the matrix A is a full rank, we could be able to find out a unique solution for this case. So, you do have what we call R is equal to B minus AX. So, let us denote this residual as B minus AX to emphasize that A and B and R is a functional of X. So, say let B be, y, y be an vector, then R of Y is equal to B minus AY, RX plus AX minus AY is equal to RX plus AX and RY square is RX square plus 2Y minus X, etc. By using the fundamental properties, we can able to make use of this. And first, assume that the satisfy this equation. That is, A transpose A of X is equal to A transpose of B. That is, A transpose of Rx is equal to norm of Ry2, that is 2 norm, that is equal to Ry2 norm plus A into X minus Y2 of square and 2 norm is greater than or equal to norm of Rx2 square. Note next, assume that x does not satisfy the normal equation. So that means x transpose Ax is equal to 0. So if it does not satisfy, set A transpose Rx is equal to z not equal to 0, define a, now a vector y such that y is equal to x plus mu of z. Okay, how it can be obtained, you can check it here. So then R of Y is equal to R of X plus A into X minus Y that is equal to R X minus mu of Z and norm of R of Y is equal to R of X plus mu square into A Z square minus 2 mu A Z R X T and this is equal to R X whole square mu square A Z 2 norm minus 2 mu into Z square 2 norm. So you get this thing. So for any mu greater than 0 and if A Z is equal to 0 then for 0 less than mu this equation so, if mu z is equal to 0, this implies that x is not a least square solution. That means, whatever we are doing it and all, it is not going to be a least square solution. So, this is what the existence of the theorem. Now, I wanted to prove how it becomes uniqueness, right, uniqueness theorem. So, we need to show that the matrix A transpose A is non-singular when A has a full rank matrix. That means, if A has a full rank matrix, I could be able to compute A transpose A is becomes a non-singular and vice versa. Well, let us look at into the contradiction. The proof is by contradiction. Suppose that the matrix A has full rank, right? And let X be a least square solution of AX minus B. Then A transpose AX is equal to 0 for some non-zero vector. It means that X transpose X is also happens to be 0. That means a transpose A x is equal to 0, that means A transpose A transpose of A is operating on x is equal to 0. Is it wrong? Right? That is A x is equal to 0 and A is a rank deficient which is a contradiction. Right? So that means A becomes a rank deficient, so you will not be able to do this. It is a contradiction. Right? Well, now let us look at into the another theorem. Let A belongs to R m m greater than or equal to m and b b n. Let a have a full rank matrix. So, the matrix of a has full rank matrix and let x be a least square solution of the equation x is equal to b. Then x satisfies a x is equal to p of b where p a is the orthogonal projection of the matrix a. Right? So, this is very very important theorem. Let a be a set in r m n m greater than or equal to n and b belongs to r m. Let a has full rank and let x be a least square solution a x is equal to b, then the least square satisfies a x is equal to b is orthogonal and all. So, once it is orthogonal, so therefore it will have many more properties as we see in the uh, previous examples. 
Let's see very simple example how you could able to draw it. Suppose that an electrical engineer has gathered the following experimental data consisting of the measurement of the data. It is like voltage and current. So he has got voltage corresponding to this, 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 corresponding to this. For a few readings, we would like to derive the normal equations for the above data corresponding to best fit of the data. So, for best fit, we want to derive normal equations for the given data. How many data points are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, therefore, 8 data points will really have it. Right? So, either we can straight line, we can fit it or we can fit a quadratic. Okay, let us see what will happen in each case. So, polynomial fitting to experimental data. A well-known example of how normal equations are arised in practical applications is fitting of a polynomial to a set of experimental data x1, x2, x3, xn be a set of paired observations. These are all paired observations. Suppose m less than or equal to n, mth degree polynomial. So, we write it as y of x is equal to a0 plus a1x, etc. am x power m. So, is the best fit for the data? Our strategy is to minimize the sum of the squares of the residues. So, you may have a residues at each stage, but the idea is we wanted to minimize the sum of all the residues so that I do get a better approximation. That is the basic idea of this strategy. Now, let us look at this. What I spoke over here, I am just writing here, E is equal to summation I is equal to 1 to N, that is Yi minus A1I minus A2I. So, like that you will have AM Xi power M whole power N. So, we must have the least square solution means dou E by dou A1 is equal to 0. That is, these are the parameters. And dou E by dou A2 is equal to 0. In general, dou E by dou A n is equal to 0. So, that means all the residues happen to be 0 with respect to the first derivative. So, that we do get an equation. Let us see. Well, you do have this equation. Set summation i is equal to 1 to n x i of k is equal to s k where k is equal to 0 1 to n. So, what is the matrix over here? Matrix over here is s naught s 1 s 2 s m s 1 s 2 s 3 s m plus 1 s m s m plus 1 s n and this is the unknown vector this is the known vector. So, now let us show that s n is equal to n. Let us see that what would happen if you take s n is equal to n right well. So, we could write it as this is a system of n plus 1 equations, m plus 1 unknowns. Therefore, it is consistent. So, therefore, it is consistent. So, that means it will have a solution. This is really a system of normal equations. To see this, we write this matrix as y is equal to 1 x1 x2 x1 square y1 x2 x3 xn square 1 x1 x2 x3 square. So, therefore, this kind of matrix you do get from the matrix when you do the what you call this least squares. Well, next let us write this matrix A as V transpose into V A. So, V transpose into V A is equal to V transpose into Y that is equal to B. If there is X prime or a distinct then mark V I as full rank matrix. The matrix V is known to have Van der Mendt's determinant. What is the Van der Mendt determinant? Van der determinant is nothing but it will have the what you call distinct values and it is a full length matrix, which we call it as Wonderman determinant. Now, for the straight line, so as already we spoke, we do have a straight line or we do have a curve. For straight line, you see over here, and these are matrices obtained from that, and this is the matrix Y. So, if you take this matrix, so 1, 1, 1, 1, etc., and this matrix, and see that how we could able to set up the equations. So, what I do is, I try to do the normal equations. V transpose VA is equal to V transpose into B is equal to B. Right? So, I will have V transpose VA is equal to V transpose of Y is equal to B. So, if you substitute the matrix V and Y etc. So, I do end up with what you call 10 power 3 times of. So, 0 0.0906 and this is 1.3385 you do get. And the value so obtained, you can write this in terms of the linear equations A0 plus A1x plus A2x square. So, therefore, in quarter equation, you can substitute the values of A1, A2, A3, you could able to get the 
final solution. Well, let us go ahead further and quadratic fit fit to m is equal to 2. So, then you do have this is the first column, second column, third column, right? And you do have for a quadratic m is equal to 2, you get the data as follows. So, what are the normal equations? Normal equations are V transpose into V A is equal to V transpose into V Y is equal to B and this is this is 7, 60, etc. Second line and third line you get similarly you get as A, a is equal to 10 power 4 comma 0 0.00. You see 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 digit arithmetic. 1, 3, 3, 2.554. Well, so it is very important to see how these normal equations will be divided. So the solution of these normal equations finally will take into the form A is equal to A1, A2, A3. So that is equal to 1.8977, 1.36 9, 4, 0, 0, so when you substitute these equations into the polynomials, so you do get a naught, a one x, a the x square, a two x square, t is equal to t is equal to twenty five. We are able to get the normal equation. So today lecture, what we learned is how actually we can fit these normal equations, how the residue can be minimized with respect to the two norm, that is Euclidean norm. So I will stop at this. The stage. Thank you very much for uh, carefully listening to my lecture and I will get back to you tomorrow morning for the next lecture. Thank you very much.